Greetings and welcome to my videos on pharmacy calculations. My name is Brad Wojak. Uh, I'm a pharmacist and I also teach this subject at a local college. Okay, so before we get started, um, I want to just kind of go uh, over some of the basics, uh, what you're actually doing when you do these problems. Uh, there's a lot of different subjects up here, but this whole, all these subjects above this line are all done exactly the same way. So if you learn one way of doing these problems, you can do all of these problems. Conversions, dosage, <coughs> dosage calculations, uh, IV drip rates, uh, anything to do with percentages or percent strength, ratio strength, uh, day supply, amount to dispense. They're all done the same way. Okay. Uh, if we have problems involving mixing something, then they're done just a little bit differently, but they still involve uh, aspects of the uh, basic system. So we're, we're going to have separate videos on powder volume problems, elevations, and concentrations. So for right now, I um, just want to talk about these top subjects. So what do you have to know? What's the one thing you have to know to uh, perform all of these different type of calculations? First thing is, you have to realize that all of these problems involve the same three elements. They're all going to ask you something. If they don't ask you something, there's no problem, right? So they're all going to ask you for how many milligram or how many mLs or what percent strength, uh, or how many drops per minute. So those, uh, the first thing you're going to do is write down the units of your answer. Because that's, you know, milligram, milliliter, it said gram, whatever they ask, okay? And then you, you know, put an equal sign there. The second thing that all of these problems have is what's called a given. Okay, they're all going to give you something to work with. They're going to say the doctor prescribed 500 milligram, or uh, an IV bag is, an IV is running at two liters over eight hours. Or they're going to say um, a patient was prescribed uh, five mLs of a dose. Uh, they're going to have to give you something to work with. If they just say, you know, how many milligrams are there? That's no question. They have to say how many milligrams are in, say, five grams. So they all give you something to work with. Okay, it's called a given. The third thing that all of these problems have in common is they all have at least one ratio. Okay. So when we talk about a ratio, we mean one gram per thousand milligram. That's a ratio. So they all have a ratio in these problems. There's at least one ratio. We're going to talk a little bit more about ratios in just a second. So since all the ratios equal 1, we're going to multiply the given by a ratio, which equals 1, and we're going to change the units of the given into the units of the answer. That's all we're doing. We're multiplying by 1. Sometimes we have to put in more than one ratio, but they always equal 1, so we're, we're never changing the actual value or the amount of the drug or whatever we're switching around there. Okay. Let's just talk about these ratios real quick here. Okay, we know that five equals five, right? We know that one gram equals a thousand milligram. So we can take five divided by five, that equals one. We can do the same thing over here. One gram over. Sorry for the interruption. We have an advisor come to gap. Okay, so um, back after that interruption. Eh, 
And we have 5 divided by 5 equals 1. We can do the same thing over here. 1 gram divided by 1,000 milligram. That also equals 1. Now, suppose we had some amoxicillin suspension that was 250 milligrams per 5 ml. You're going to say, well, how in the world does that equal 1? Well, it does. It equals 1 for that problem. There's not always 250 milligram per 5 ml, but if the problem says that the strength is 250 milligram per 5 ml, then it equals 1. You can think of it this way. Suppose you have a bottle of amoxicillin and you shook it up, and someone said, well, put 250 milligrams in this little container. Well, you shake it up and you say, okay, there's 250 milligrams per 5 ml, so you put 5 mLs in there, right? Now suppose they said just put 5 mLs in this little container. Well, you'd say, okay, that's easy. Put 5 mLs in there. Okay, exactly the same thing. So this container is exactly the same as that. So this divided by that is 1. Okay, so I like to call... Um, this type of ratio, an off-the-shelf ratio. Uh, there's always one gram per a thousand milligram. I like to call this type of ratio a custom ratio. It's only good for that one problem. Okay. So let's let's do one problem of each of these uh, categories, and I'll show you how they're all similar. Okay. So conversion. Let's say we want to convert uh, 4.5 grams into milligram. The units of the answer, the given, the ratio in this case is 1,000 milligrams per gram. We put a 1 there for 1. Okay, so anything divided by itself is 1. So basically, a gram divided by the gram, they cancel themselves out, and you're left with milligrams. So 4.5 times 1,000. 4,500. Okay. Units of the answer, the given, and the ratio. Okay, dosage calculations. Let's use the amoxicillin 250 per 5. Okay, so you want the doctor prescribed 500 milligram. You want to know how many mLs to dispense. The ratio, we already talked about that, is 250 milligram per 5 ml. So ml goes on top, 5 ml, 250 milligram on the bottom, right? This is equal to 1. Milligrams cancel, 500 times 5 divided by 250, 10 ml. Units of the answer given the ratio. IV drip rates. Now there's a separate uh, video on this, so if you're not familiar, don't worry, but this is just an example of showing how they're all the same. Okay, so we want drops per minute, and let's say we have uh, two liters over eight hours. Okay, so this is a given. They say you're, you have an IV uh, running at two liters over eight hours. You want to know how many drops per minute. Uh, you're going to administer. So we're going to need several um, ratios. So we'll say that there's 20 drops per, per ml. That's the drop factor. You always have to know how many drops per ml. We have to know that there's a thousand mls per liter. We have to, have to know that there's 60 minutes per hour. Okay, so on this problem, we basically have to change liters into drops, hours into minutes. So let's go liters into drops first. So there's uh, 1,000 mLs per liter, and there's uh, 20 drops per mL. So now we have our drops. Now we just have to change hours into minutes. 
So hour goes on top to cancel that hour, 60 minutes on the bottom. So double check everything, make sure that everything is gone except the units of the answer. We have drops per minute, drops per minute. Okay, now we take out the calculator after all the problem is set up and all the units are canceled out except the ones that are in the answer. So 2 divided by 8 times 1,000 times 20 divided by 60. So that comes out to 83 drops per minute. Okay. We have the units of the answer the given, and then one or more ratios. Pretty simple, huh? Okay. okay, percentages. Then the percent sign, all you have to know is if you want to add the percent sign to your answer, you multiply by 100%. Let's say I have 0 0.35, you want to change that to a percent. You multiply by 100 percent, right? Not 100, but 100 percent. 100 percent is what? That's one, right? Okay. So we're multiplying 0.35 times one. We're not changing how much it actually is. We're just changing the appearance. So 0 0.35 times 100 is 35. Then the percent sign carries over because it doesn't get canceled out. Now I know. Um, 100% doesn't look like a ratio, but um, technically it's just one. You know, we can draw it like that. Now it looks like a ratio. Okay. Percent strength. Um, okay, so we'll use a um, like a normal saline solution, which is 0.9% sodium chloride. Now we're going to go into this in more depth in a separate video, so don't worry. But it's 0.9%, it's a weight volume, which means grams per ml. Okay, so that's our ratio. Let's say uh, how many grams are in, I don't know, 700 mLs of normal saline. Okay, units of the answer, the given, and the ratio. I'm do it like this. So 700 mLs. Okay. We need grams in our answer. We have to get rid of everything else except grams. So milliliters cancel out. To get rid of the percent sign, we divide by 100%. That's gone. Okay, so now we have 700 times 0.9 divided by 100. So that's going to be 6.3 grams, right? Okay, so the units of the answer, the given, and the ratio. Same as all the other ones. Okay, ratio strength. Again, there's a separate video on this, so you're not going to learn everything right in this little snippet. Some drugs are described by a ratio strength. That means one gram per thousand mLs. You can write like that, it's easier. Okay. So a problem, um, how many, let's say how many milligrams are in uh, 2,000 mLs of a 1 to 1,000 solution. Okay, so this is our ratio. Our answer has to be a milligram, so we're going to start off with 1 gram over 1,000 uh, milliliters. We'll change grams to milligrams. 1,000 milligram per gram. Okay, so in this case, the thousands cancel out, and we end up with 2,000 milligrams. Okay. Units of the answer, the given, and this time we have to use two ratios. They both equal one, of course. Okay.
Day supply. Sometimes you have to figure out how many days a prescription is going to last. Well, if you're a technician, you're going to have to figure that out, believe me. Okay, so answer days. The given, let's say it's 90 tablets. Okay, the ratio, we'll say the SIG is one TID, one tablet three times a day. So that means that there's three tablets per day. Okay. So that's the ratio we're going to use for this problem. Stick it in here so that day is on top and tablets are on the bottom. One day per three tabs. So 90 divided by three, of course, is 30. Okay. Units of the answer, the given, and the ratio. Okay, just one more to go here. All right. The amount to dispense is pretty much just the opposite of the one we just did. So let's say you need a 30 day supply and um, you want to figure out how many tabs to give. And this time we'll say it's one QID. So one four times a day. So that's four tabs per day. This time we put tabs on top and day on the bottom. Four tabs for one day. So that's 120 tabs. Okay, so remember, write down the units of your answer. So you're always going to have to ask you something. Write down what they give you to work with, and then you can just write down all the ratios in the problem. And uh, sometimes they give you information that you don't need, but you still write down the ratio if you want to, and then pick up the ratios you need. Remember, the ratios are tools to change the given into the units of the answer. Okay, thank you.